Coming up on today's episode... Welcome back to DERB. We're at the bench once again. Usual spot. Um, what I got going here today is back on the Ranger again. Yes, we are. We haven't never left <laughs> uh, this little device here. You heard the um, last the video was the demonstration of the unit in operation. And it operated flawlessly, I thought. Well, I mean, there was some, uh, you know, like I said, the caps need to be changed on the amp board and uh, get rid of some of the muddiness or the mur murkiness, whatever you want to call that, uh, get the clarity back to it. And I know it sounded pretty good on the video, but it, in person you could hear a little bit more uh, of the uh, clarity uh, issues that I was talking about. Um, I want to go over a few things and then we're going to look at some pictures uh, that I have drawn and, uh, not drawn, but uh, taken of the schematic and also with uh, the uh, camera on my phone and we're going to take a look at those in just a second but first I have decided the uh, in place that I'm going to put our, our inputs for the uh, mp3 player oh yeah by the way that is in Seymour the actual correct one that I want to use with this is in Seymour uh, it arrived this morning uh, and of course today being a holiday President's Day there won't be any mail but, um, like I said, it's supposed to be, it is scheduled for delivery tomorrow, so I will have that by then. Uh, here is the place that I'm going to put our inputs here, two, two uh, uh, RCA jacks right here, and that is the way it's going to be. If we look at the other side, you can see that's uh, this area here is completely open and uh, accessible, so that's where I've decided to put the... Uh, input jacks for the mp3 player uh, again temporarily we're going to set some things up here without doing that but again that's uh, temporarily <laughs> I would like once this comes in to hook it up to the place I have outlined on the uh, what do you call it uh, the uh, pictures that I'm going to show you here and try it out there so uh, without further ado let's take a look at uh, some of these pictures Okay, we are here at the computer now. We're going to look at these pictures that I showed, talked about in the previous segment. Uh, if we look at the first one up on the uh, screen right now, it's the FM multiplex board. Uh, again, this is the one that uh, I was pointing to on the actual unit itself previously. And uh, if we look at it, this is the input end from the... Uh, uh, rest of the uh, FM receiver part and this would be our output end right here so this is what we're going to be looking at here a little bit closer just in the next frame so let's look at that now alright now like I said this is the closer close up end of it <laughs> I guess is the best way to say it um, if we look at the uh, R and the L on the board that I have printed there it's difficult to see, but if, if this was a better image, you could actually see the actual L and R that is printed on the board. It's in, in white letters, but uh, that's uh, how I know where they go. So, uh, Also, you know, as, as you probably saw on the previous one, there's a uh, brown and a gray uh, coax wire coming out of those positions. And it, you can't see it on here, but the uh, left one is a red wire for the signal wire, and the right one's a white wire for the signal wire. And those two uh, shielded coax wires go over to the amp input of the amp board. So let's take a look at that next. All right, so what we see here is the uh, bottom side of the amp board, and this is the input end. And that's just a generalized, I wanted to show you the picture of it, the whole board. Uh, one one thing you can note is the uh, middle uh, big big long foil trace there. That's the ground, and that branches over to another spot, which I'm going to show you on the next one of the next clips here. So let's go over to those now. All right, now this one <laughs> is a little bit wrong. I 
I drew it wrong, and I'll, I'll correct it in our next uh, segment, but for right now, uh, I just want to show you basically that uh, this is uh, the way it's going to work. Uh, the uh, gray wire is correct. That's where it goes. There's a white wire coming out of the signal wire comes out of there. The actual shield of the gray wire is not connected on this side because you really don't need that. Uh, it's connected on the uh, multiplex board and we, we saw that I think or I did anyway but there again is that uh, ground signal or symbol right there as you can see comes over here and the, also this is a ground here and it comes over this way and I'll show you that here again like I say but I wanted to say this is actually the place that this uh, uh, should should hook up where the red wire should hook up here on this one here and I'm going to show you why that is in just a second so let's go look at the next frame please all right, now we're, we're looking at an actual photo taken with my uh, phone camera. Uh, this is the actual, uh, again, um, multi uh, output end of the multiplex board. There's so much going on here, I can't, I get tongue-tied. <laughs> but I've got the L and the R there. Now, if you look carefully, this is the L for the actual that's printed on the board. You can see the L right there. And this is the R that is printed there. It does that. Of course, it's covered by that cable, so you can't see it. So I just went ahead and added the R and the L so that you could actually see it. But again, that is a red wire there for the left side. And that goes against traditional uh, stereo patch cable connections because uh, in those, red is always right. But again, this was an early example of uh, stereo stuff because uh, this is back in the 60s, you have to remember. So, like I said, but anyway, clearly for our example, we, we know the left is spelled out there, left, and it is red wire. So we know that for sure. So let's, that's the output of the multiplex board. Let's go over to the input of the amp board and see what that looks like. All right, here's your input uh, side of the uh, multiplex, or the amplifier board. Uh, again, you have, there's your uh, wire coming in. You remember how I told you that that was wrong here? And I'll, that's, I'll explain that in just a second. But this is the actual uh, brown cable from the multiplex board. This is the gray cable from the multiplex board here. So this is our right, and you can even see that right there. <laughs> and I know you can see that. That's an R uh, for right channel. So that is that. Now, uh, on that, and I'll show you. I'll, let me show you the next one first. Uh, looking at this one, you can see basically I've got it outlined here now how, how things are. This is what I started to point out. This is a ground here. This goes over here, and you can see it connects right into this one. And this happens to be the uh, ground uh, for the tape heads. Now you can see it says from tape head. That's this box right here. These, these two red and blue wires uh, here are left and right channels from the tape head. So they go in directly into the amplifier. You can see the foil traces, there are no breaks there. They go right on in directly to the amplifier section. So um, that's the way, the if you looked at the uh, schematic, that's the way it's shown. And let's take a look at that real quick too while we're here. All right, here's what you can see. Now, this is the tape head. Again, you have both tape heads here. Let's put them in there. But this is one of the tape heads. You can see it comes straight in here. There's no brakes, and it goes right into the preamp. You see that transistor there. There is a uh, capacitor in there for uh, isolation, I guess, but, you know, that's not there. So, I mean, that's, that's there, but like I said, there's no um, degre degradation of the signal. It, that tape head needs every bit of amplification it can get. Now, uh, contrast that with the inputs from the IF or, or the uh, multiplex, the stereo FM coming in here, and you'll see that it goes through a capacitor and a 180K resistor. So there is some isolation between that and some degradation of the signal because that's designed in. This is a stronger signal coming from the actual multiplex board than what you get out of a tape head. Now you, if you think of a microphone, an old crystal microphone, the outputs are not that much and they had to have a, pre a preamp and that's why this is this goes directly in the preamp instead of like going through a resistor like this one does. So yeah, there you go on that. Uh, we, we'll take a look back at the other again so get back to that. So again that's that's the, the situation there. If you see this pad here, there's a pad there, there's a resistor 
between these two and same on this side there's a resistor between these two here and like I said we could look at the other side of the board but I don't have it up right now but uh, like I said that's what that's what that resistor is and that's why we're gonna hook our our uh, thing from from the uh, Bluetooth adapter module whatever you want to call it into these two here this one and this one and we're gonna try that and hopefully that will work alright what I'm gonna do basically it's put some temporary jumpers in here and you know I can just run it over to the output of the uh, mp3 player or, or the uh, Bluetooth uh, module and hook it up that way and I don't even have to hook up both channels I just want to see what are what are what do you call it's gonna work like I want to make sure it's it's gonna work correctly and there's not gonna be any uh, problem with the uh, multiplex circuitry interfering with it now the, the multiplex will be off the radio will be off so there should not be any problem with that let's take a look at that real quick while we're at here alright if we take a look at the uh, multiplex section here for the uh, radio this is where we're hooking into basically 61 and 82 uh, that's the lines that we're going to be hooking into now it's uh, there's nothing in in the path there that uh, on the other side where by the tape heads that we just showed you but I want to see what's here you see it comes into a, a 2200k uh, or 2200 ohm resistor here and a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor then it goes directly to this uh, preamp uh, so basically um, you know it, it, I don't think it should be a problem none of this is going to be activated it's not going to be powered or anything like that and I don't think any of these this uh, source here is not going to be activated or anything I don't believe there's going to be any problem with wiring our uh, uh, mp3 or bluetooth decoder get it boy uh, <laughs> bluetooth decoder into this position these positions and so as such uh, that's what we're going to try anyway now if it does become a problem and it, you know this added circuitry degrades our signal to where to the point where it can't be used then we'll we'll take an, and put a different uh an aux type input on the uh in a different spot that's isolated so we'll just keep that in mind so but i again i don't think there's going to be any problem with it i believe it's going to work just fine back to the other video so I just thought I would go over all that and let you know what we we are doing and everything and I I think that it's going to work or I hope it's going to work. Now obviously we're a long way from actually doing it because uh, I, I want to get all this worked out first because uh, you know it's easy job when you when you know what you're doing and your goal is uh, to get in there and do it but but you need direction to, to be able to do it before you can actually do it. I guess I did I say that right <laughs> uh, so anywho that's that's the way what we're looking at there and uh, I think it's gonna work now um, again if there is any problem we're gonna have to put some kind of switching in there uh, to uh, not have it uh, con contact any of the uh, components from the multiplex slide that would be in my book that's where we would get any kind of conflict from it uh, I don't believe we're going to get any the other way, like I said, because of that resistor mainly because there's enough isolation there. So uh, again, uh, that's just the way I'm looking at it, and uh, hope everybody's uh, having a good day. It's been a nice sunny day here, temperatures all in the um, 60s, I believe. So not bad, not bad at all. Um, I had to go to Walmart pick up some stuff. I uh, bought another chair like the one I'm sitting in here at the bench. I'm uh, I, I, I like it a lot, and I bought another one for the bedroom. So when I when I get moved in there, I'll have a decent chair in there as well to sit in. So I am still at the same spot <laughs> that I was the other day. I haven't uh, improved any on that, so uh, I will have to do that and get that done. It's ready to go. I just got to get the gumption to do it. So, all right, that's all I'm going to say about this and that. Let's look at this once more time. And like I say, that's uh, everything is hunky dory now. I did notice you guys may remember um, from the de the demo that I didn't seem to have any kind of um, uh, stereo, and I don't know if that's a fault of this board here because that is the multiplex um, part of the FM right here, this board here. So it's possible 
that I have a problem on this board here. So uh, I'm going to have to troubleshoot that. I'm not great with FM. I'm going to tell you that right off the bat. Uh, but again, you know, it should be should be able to uh, figure it out, I think. Uh, so like I said, once we do that, and you know, there that's that's the other thing. There is no stereo indicator light now. That that may even have a uh, bearing on it. I don't know. Again, I'm not familiar with FM that much, but uh, it does not have that light on it, and I I haven't even been able to find out where it hooks up to. But on the front, there's just room for two lights, and they're both red and white connectors or wires, I should say. And I believe those are just the dial indicator and the track indicator, I think, is what those are for. So, again, uh, I believe the uh, stereo indicator is on a separate one, and I don't see any wires in here. This has been worked on before, obviously. Uh, it has some, some some clear telltale signs that it has somebody's been in here playing around with it. So, But it likes to say it works, so that's <laughs> that's a good thing, I guess. All right, that's enough. I'm getting near my 20 minutes here on the camera. So you guys have a great day. Thank you so, so very much for watching, and we will see ya. Yeah.